stem cells. Something you'll have probably come across in the news, lots of uh, lots of information out there and generally not very well informed information from news channels. Okay, so what is a stem cell, first of all? Stem cells are cells that are capable of dividing to differentiate into different types of cells. Another thing that they can do is that they can continue to divide for the entirety of the organism's lifetime. So most cells, once they've done their job, they've been around for a certain length of time, they're going to go through programmed cell death, apoptosis, and they're just going to wipe themselves off the face of the map. And then another cell, so the stem cell is then going to create another cell to replace them. So that's why stem cells are different. There's different types, and we're going to look at them here. So let's look at totipotent stem cells. So toti is like total, and potent is like the potential. This has total potential to become any kind of cell from that organism. Differentiate means that they can specialize or divide to become. Let's put that. So where are we going to find totipotent stem cells? Well, we're going to find them in early embryos. If we're talking about mammals, which is generally where these questions are going to go, plants have many more totipotent stem cells. But in terms of mammals, we're going to found in very early mammalian embryos. So first few divisions, really. They can form placental cells. They can form any type of cell, but including placental cells. Next up, we've got pluripotent. Now, maybe I'm going to underline these just to make them stand out. There's going to be a lot of red here. Okay, so pluripotent stem cells can differentiate into many types of cell. Or specialized cell. Where do we find them? Well, these could be in embryos. They could also be in adult cells. By adult, I mean post-birth, basically. No longer an embryo inside the womb. They can, all types of stem cells, remember, can divide for the organism's lifetime. That's going to go for all of these stem cells. But they cannot make placental cells. So they have pluripotency, they have the potential to become many things, like plural, but they can't become everything. Okay, now moving down, we've got multipotent. These are stem cells that can differentiate into a few types of specialized cells. The examples we're going to give here are going to be, e.g., bone marrow. Uh, this can form, we can form red blood cells, RBCs, and we can form white blood cells. Of course, they can divide for the organism's lifetime as well. And last but not least, we have unipotent, or like unicycle. We can form one type of specialized cell. So these are different from sort of regular cells, non-unipotent cells, because they can divide for all of the organism's lifetime, but they can only form one type of cell. So the heart has a few unipotent cells that it can use to regenerate heart tissue. This is a slow process. It was not believed that this was possible a few years ago, but it does have some unipotent cells and they regenerate cardiomyocytes.
And that's the only type of cell that they can make. And they do this if heart tissue is damaged, obviously myocardial infarction or heart attack might do that. Uh, this is new to the specification this year. Okay, so what do we need to know about cell specialization or we can also call that differentiation. Okay, so we can say that all cells contain 100% of the organism's DNA. So every cell has the DNA to make every other kind of cell in theory. So your skin cells have the DNA in them that would make eye cells or liver cells or heart cells, but they're just those genes are not being expressed. Only totipotent cells can express all of those genes. So why don't they, why can't they do this? Well, the conditions within cells are going to control which genes are turned on or expressed and which genes aren't. And when we say expressed, really we mean sort of transcribed and translated. Into proteins. So a protein that they might make could be a transcription factor, which is going to control the expression of other, other genes. And these proteins that are expressed because of the conditions would change the internal environment of the cell. And this is going to affect the expression of other genes. This basically means that cells become specialized. And at the moment, certainly unnaturally, this can't be reversed. The holy grail of medicine at the moment is basically trying to wind this clock back to take a skin cell, we call it a somatic cell, a non-sex cell, and wind its genetic clock back so that it can become totipotent. It has the DNA to do that, but there's no mechanism at the moment for doing this to making it totipotent. We've got pretty good at making some pluripotent cells from, from specialized unipotent cells, but it's when we get this to work, then there's all sorts of medical applications and there will be a video on how we can use stem cells in medicine. So check that out. And in terms of knowing these key terms, basically, totipotent only in the very early stages of embryos. This is why they're a little bit controversial and make headlines because people make embryos to take out the totipotent stem cells so they can use them to do good stuff with. Pluripotent can make many types of cells, but not everything, especially not placental cells. Multipotent, these are in adults. So fully grown adults are going to have these guys. Maybe I'm going to put a little, so I'm going to put a little E. What color shall I do it in? I'm going to E for embryo. And we're going to have, well, this is going to be in the embryo and in adults. And then, well, I think the embryo will have them all anyway, but let's say adults and adults is what those mean.